There's Julio just walked out. I was going to say we're glad he is indeed home. Julio has left the building. Well, we're glad each and every one of you are here. And I'm thankful to be before you once again today. If you would, be turning over to the second chapter of the book of Acts. I'd like to begin in verse 41 and go through the end of the chapter. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This passage is great because it says that 3,000 souls were saved that day by the gospel and their obedience to it. But I would like for us to consider a particular phrase there in verse 46. The last three uh, words of that verse, singleness of heart. Now if you casually read that verse, you'll think it's talking about a oneness. Like, I am a single guy before this podium. I'm married, but I'm only one guy here. That's not actually what's being talked about. In fact, the, the Greek word that's used here, this is the only time it's used. Aphalotes. Aphalotes. And it's a compound word coming from alpha, which is anti or against, and phalos. Phalos is one of those words that it means that it's a rocky land. It's a, an area full of loose rocks. Well, if you put these two together, it... it signifies a place that is smooth to the point where you're not going to stub your foot. That's the actual definition. There's no stumbling blocks. There's no things that will hinder. Aphalotes. Now, I think it's interesting to note that it's these new Christians that possess this singleness of heart, this absence of stumbling blocks. There's nothing there to cause issue. Uh, many have commented on this, this type of idea, and it deals mainly with sincerity. These brethren were sincere. Uh, nowadays, especially in America, you have kind of the idea of trying to keep up with the Joneses. So everybody's in competition to gather all this different stuff. And so-and-so might have a big bass boat. Well, I've got to have a bigger bass boat. And on and on it goes. That's not the type of thing that's being talked about here with these new Christians. They don't have that type of mentality. They have a sincere mindset. They have an unworldly attitude. I also think it's interesting that whenever you look at Matthew chapter 16 and when Christ is comparing Peter to the other rock, Peter's, the word there is, is really a, a small pebble, something that would be found at a, a side of a river, something along those lines. But Jesus is saying, but this rock, the fact that he's the Son of God, it's really referring to more of a bedrock, a smooth surface that will supply support. You look at this building and most buildings that we have around us, the construction that's used, there's some sort of bedrock used. It's typically concrete. 
But what better surface would there be to build a church upon? I don't mean a building. I'm talking about the church. The bedrock that Jesus supplies. Well, you go on a little bit further. This aphalotes, this singleness of heart, the bedrock that Jesus supplies for the church, smoothness, there's nothing that will stumble or cause other folks to stumble, Christians to, to stumble. His commandments are not grievous. But this smooth surface to build the church upon allows Christians to not have to have these stumbling blocks. Think about all the different cares that we have in this world. All the issues we face individually, collectively as family members. <coughs> Me and James were talking about that before our fellowship meal. We had a lot of things that we've, we've faced. And I know that's true of everyone in this room. The church allows for a place for those things to temporarily cease. We're here. We're worshiping God. We don't have to worry about those things right now. We're focused on worshiping God. But this singleness of heart ultimately provides for the unity that Jesus prayed about in John chapter 17. Aphalotes also points to simplicity. Simplicity. The gospel is a very simple thing. It takes a literal rocket surgeon to complicate it. You have to be overeducated to try to overcomplicate the gospel. Or you have to be dishonest. Or a mixture of the two. But think about the, the doctrine that these Christians had just followed. They heard God's word. They believed in the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. They repented of their sins. And they confessed Christ before others. And then what happened? They were baptized, verse 41. doesn't get very much more simple than that. So there's simplicity in the gospel. There is oneness in the gospel. And there is a lack of rocks to stub our feet on. That might sound silly, and I'm not trying to make it sound like such, but if you've ever walked to the kitchen at night trying to get a glass of water and stub your toe on furniture, you, you understand I'm not walking that path. That's the type of traps that Satan leaves. He wants to catch us up. He wants us to make us stumble. We don't have that with Christ. We don't have that upon the bedrock foundation that he has laid out for the church. So there's sincerity, there's unity, there's simplicity in the gospel. But each of these things were, were exhibited by the Christians in this chapter that are depicted here. That same type of attitude must be present in each and every one of us. We, we sing a song sometimes, Christ will give thee rest. Come to him in simple Trusting faith. It's not overcomplicated. It's not complicated at all. He's given us plenty of evidence. Proofs that show that he is in fact the very son of God. And he has given us a very simple gospel to follow. On an individual basis. It is up to me to obey the gospel. It is up to me to live it out in my life. Now this afternoon as we typically try to do. We want to offer the invitation to those who have allowed sin into their life, who have perhaps overcomplicated the gospel. Maybe you've added something to it by your actions. Maybe you've attempted to take something away by your actions. God's word remains unchanged. How does your life compare to the word of God? If you're not a Christian, make that step today. Begin that new life today. Or if you are a child of God, put away that sin Either way, whatever your need now is, make it known together as we stand and sing.